Hello, it's a beautiful day here in the UK and today I'm going to be covering biochar. So I'm going to start off with how I made it and then I'm going to get into all the information that you might want to know about biochar. So the first thing we're going to cover is what is the difference between biochar and charcoal. Here's a great table that shows you the differences between biochar and charcoal. The key bit is temperature. Temperature is hotter in biochar. I'm going to be using the barbecue so there's more oxygen and this oxygen is going to help burn and then we can reduce the oxygen. What this will allow is the biochar to create more and bigger pores which is going to give us all the beneficial bits we need for our biochar. This is the wood that I'm going to be using for my biochar. It's a mixture of elder and grape that I had to chop down at my allotment. It's only a few centimetres thick at thickest, which is the perfect size to make sure we're getting a good heat and a good biochar. I'm going to be using my barbecue today. I've not seen anyone else do this. One of the problems I've had with the barbecue are these little holes, and we don't want any oxygen in the bottom, else this will burn our biochar. The solution I came up with is I had some modelling clay from my daughters. So I'm going to be adding this to the bottom. Next is starting the fire. So I've just created a bit of paper at the bottom and some six on top, and I'm just going to get it going. Now the fire's got going, we're going to add some sticks on top. The sticks being added to the top is going to stop the oxygen getting to the lower levels. When we want to add the sticks is when they start to ash. This means that they're going to break down the carbon. We don't want that, so we add the extra sticks. This stops the oxygen getting to the charcoal, and that will stop us burning it away. So you can see here, starting to ash, that's when we add the new sticks. After a bit of trial and error, I found it best to add quite a lot of sticks to the fire. I chopped them up a bit finer so they could all fit in, because they, if there's too many air spaces, it doesn't work very well. The key bit to biochar is controlling the oxygen. We want lots of oxygen in the burn zone to burn away all of the gases, but we don't want lots of oxygen in the lower bits. I found once I used a better wood, this worked really well and much faster. So make sure your wood is dry and that you've got a good quality wood. When the burn is done, for me that was when I ran out of time, we just want to douse it with water. This will create a bunch of steam and that steam Will create the biggest pores that we can get which is what we want with our biochar it'll also put out the fire and stop it burning away you need to make sure that you use a lot of water because these coals are very hot and they will stay hot and can reignite if you don't fully put them out i'm going to be soaking mine fully once out there'll be some sticks left on top we just want to put this back into the burn power as they aren't ready at the top there'll also be ones that are half done discard those as well what we'll be left with is this glassy biochar. It should break apart nice and easily and not make your hand too dirty. This is the amount that I got and I'm really pleased for a first attempt. I'm gonna add it to this bucket now it's fully cool to break up and make sure the particle sizes are smaller. You can tell if you've got good charcoal in, if it's good, is when you crush it up and get it on your hands, you come to some water and then rinse it. It just rinses off with just water. This means all the oils and all the other bits in the woods have fully burnt off. Putting it into the bucket is handy because we can then, after crushing it, inoculate it. I'm just using one of the biggest sticks that I didn't use and I'm just going to slowly work my way through and crush it all up as much as possible. We want to see nice small bits. The optimal size is about two millimeters. Next, I'm adding some compost. This is going to add the bacteria. And what I've also done off camera is added urine. I'm going to take some of this next and I'm going to take it over to my worm farm. This is one of the best ways to inoculate your biochar. The worms have loads of bacteria in their stomach, so when they digest it, it's not only going to help them digest their food, but it's going to absorb all that nutrients and bacteria. It'll also stop any smells. The next bit I'm going to be doing 
is taking the biochar after leaving it for a couple of hours to sit I'm going to take it over to my compost heap you can leave this for a couple of weeks if you don't have a compost heap I'm going to be adding it in layers as I flip my compost heap over to the other side the layers I'm going to be adding is a bit of compost with some coffee grounds and some water just to make sure everything is nice and moist the studies I've read have suggested this is one of the best ways to inoculate your biochar and it's the best way to maintain as much nutrients from your compost and make sure it's not being leached down. So now that I have gone over everything that I did and how I inoculated it, I'm going to touch on a few things, extra details, things to know about biochar and different options for producing and inoculating. So the first thing I've got here is a study, I'll put it up here and what that's going to Kind of give you is the most general overview of biochar and its benefits increased plant growth increased water retention ph changes increases to the microbiome of the soil so really great stuff next we're going to talk about what biochar can be made of it can be made out of anything and i personally think having a mixture of things is really good some of the things can be slightly harder to make at home you'd need a contraption which I'm going to do hopefully in a later video where you can essentially put it inside the fire and the fire will heat it up and it will burn inside. You can do it using tin cans and it's quite easy, but I was just trying to keep it as simple as possible today. You can put things like coffee grounds, waste scraps. It makes things that maybe not burn in an open fire as well with a bit more moisture. It makes it much easier to burn then. Some of the best things to be using is things like bamboo so if you've got a bamboo it's really sustain sustainable it comes up quickly so it's a really good source of carbon if you are looking the next thing to be considering is when you've got your biochar what sizes should it be um, the research mostly says the best and the most beneficial is about two millimeters but i think there's a benefit in all so having a range from maybe a millimeter up to some slightly small, some slightly larger pieces would be good and that would cover most bases. But we don't want to have too many big bits because we want as much surface area, which means breaking up as small as we can. On top of that, if we do have slightly bigger pieces, it will break down in the soil. Just when you're moving things around, the worms, the creatures, they will break it down slowly. So don't worry too much if it's not perfectly small. When it comes to inoculating your biochar, there's lots of different ways you can do it and everyone's got their own recipe, but there's a few key points that need to be hit. Firstly is a source of protein. Protein will break down into the nitrogen. That can be flour, that can be urine, it could be food scraps, it could be grass clippings, anything that has a source of nitrogen, one part. Next part is some minerals. Often people use rock dust, I didn't have any of that today, so I've not used it, but that can be a really useful thing to add. And then finally, we want some microbes. The microbes can come from compost, just from the soil, and most beneficial, in my opinion, would be from your worm bin, if you have one. Experiment with different bits. I always think diversity is key, so adding a bit of all of these things can be really helpful. You can inoculate it dry, you can inoculate it wet. So soaking in water and urine can be one or just within the compost heap each one has its own slightly unique benefits and its own uses another really interesting way to start utilizing a, a biochar and to inoculate it at the same point is to use it as a absorber of uh, smells and nitrogen so in the bottom of a chicken coop would be a great one or in a fish tank so if there's any animals utilizing it in their touches for guinea pigs popping it in it will just soak up everything it will stop it smelling and it will be a great way to inoculate it as well